you and I both know that habits make or break our day. Stick to your good habits and see how growth compounds. Or fall prey to your bad habits and let the day slip away. So how can you stack the deck in your favor and maximize the chances that you'll choose your good habits every single day? Start using Notion to track your habits. But Matthias, isn't it like super hard to build a habit tracker in Notion? No, it's actually super simple. I'm going to show you exactly how in the next few minutes. But first, let's have a look at the end result. A simple and minimalist yet super powerful habit tracker for Notion. It uses all of Notion's latest features, Notion buttons, the recurring template feature, plus analytics for Notion to create the best possible setup for habits in Notion in 2023. Super simple to use. Every day you get a new entry in here and then you just click one of the buttons, whatever you've done. So let's say I slept and I work towards my goal. I get them checked off. And as you can see here on the side, I automatically get a score calculated based on my weekly uh, target and then my overall performance. And works just the same on mobile. Let me just quickly take a sip and then I can take off water for the day. Here's how you can build this yourself using a simple three-step framework. Oh, and the template is in the description, of course, if you don't want to build this yourself. Step one, building your databases. Here's my golden rule for building anything in Notion. Always, always start with the databases. Create two databases, one for your habits and one to track your stats. Now, uh, to do so, we just type slash database and then we get uh, my habits. And then we do the same for um, the my stats. Now we will set them up super simply here for this walkthrough. We'll just use one habit, but you can just repeat these steps as many times as you want to, to add any number of habits that you want to track. And the first thing that we want to do is we can uh, remove the uh, some empty rows in here. We just need one entry here called my stats. And let's just start here with uh, today to get us uh, for our first entry. We can also rename this column if we want to uh, the day. And uh, then for here, what we need are two more fields. We need a uh, the actual habit. So in this case, let's just uh, track my sleeping. So whether I slept enough. And instead of uh, this, it will be a checkbox. Here we go. So a simple checkbox. And then we want uh, to uh, also record the actual uh, date because uh, this uh, form property up here, you know, it's just a name property. So if you want to see it in the calendar at some point, it makes sense to also record the actual uh, date here. But we can hide that. We don't need to see it because we'll always write the uh, date up here. So let's hide this in the view. Great. Now, in the stats one, what we want to do is we want to uh, create uh, two properties first. We want to create a target property for sleeping. So let's call this target sleeping and it's going to be a number. And then we want to connect these two databases because the stats database has to count all the entries in here and has then to calculate whether we are reaching our goal or not. And to do so, click on the plus button and create a relation. Now, this whole concept is based on the uh, uh, checkbox method for Notion. If you want to learn more about that, I have a video in the description with an in-depth tutorial. Uh, we want to make sure that we show this on both sides. So we will show uh, like the my habits and then my stats. We can keep the names because they will be anyway hidden. And then we created this connection. And now what we want to do is we want to make sure that all the entries in the habit tracker are always linked to this one property here. So in order to do that, we will set up uh, two things. First, we will uh, connect the existing entries and then in here we will set a filter and the filter that we're going to set is that my stats contains <laughs> my stats and that way whenever I enter now a new entry up here it will automatically have this connection this is one of Notion's features that is called like auto filling properties through filters if you have a filter on a database and you create a new entry it will try to fulfill it so as you can see if I add now something else here uh, something else it automatically connects and we are just sure that whenever we have an entry here in the habits database, we also link it to our stats. That's nearly it for the first setup. All we need now are two rollups to help us count our values. We first want to count how many days we've been tracking our, day, uh, our habits for and then another rollup to track how often we actually did our habit. And to do so, we click on the plus button and then we search for rollup and then we call this uh, just total days 
and I like to put like a hashtag in front to just uh, tell me like when I look later and I have a lot of properties that this is a number. And as a relation, we select my habits and the property will be the um, days. And then we just count all. Again, if you are confused with rollups and want to learn more about them, I also have a tutorial for that as part of my complete Notion tutorial in the description. So these are all our days. And as you can see, whenever now we enter a new entry in here, right? Uh, let's call this uh, at yesterday. We see that this counts up. So we always know, okay, how many days have we been tracking for? And to count uh, our habit, we create another rollup. So let's click on here, rollup. And this time we're going to choose um, the uh, sleeping checkbox. And we want to count how many of them are checked. So this uh, we can call like also again a hashtag and sleeping. Great. And now, as you can see, if I check off this checkbox, it increases by one, now by two and so on and so on. So the very simple uh, system already works. You have your entries here. You can check off whether you've done the habit or not. And this database will count it. Now, if you want to set this up for several habits, then what you should do is you should, uh, of course, create here several checkboxes, once for, one for each habit. And then you want to make sure that you have a target value and a rollup that counts the checkboxes in here as well. And that's it for step one, building the databases. Step two, supercharge your databases with formulas. It's time to write some Notion formulas. But before you get some flashbacks to high school math and get a panic, don't worry, it's super simple and you can just copy paste them from the blog post in the description. Let's start off with a very simple formula. And that is the one to get this part here. This like the weekly performance. So we want to see how many times did we do something in a given week out of our target. And that will have two parts. First, we need to find out how often did we do something in a given week, right? Because we will have a lot more entries here at some point than just the ones from one week. And we don't want to delete the old ones. And then we also need to display it nicely like this. First things first, let's check whether an entry is in a given week. And to do that, let's actually quickly show our date again. And let's just fill in some dates. So for today, we have today. For yesterday, we have yesterday. And then for something else, let's pick something in the last week. Now, how can we check whether this entry is in the current week? Well, with a simple formula, we click on the plus and we get the formula thing and then we call this this week question mark and then the formula uh, will simply take uh, the current date and check whether it's the same week as the week from date. Now to do that we're going to use something called format date and what this allows us is to extract from a date uh, a specific part and in our case we want to extract the week. So to do that we open the brackets and then we take now which is uh, this then a comma and then we type quotation marks, a big W and another quotation marks. If you, this makes your week start on a Monday. Uh, and if you have a small one, it will start on a Sunday. And then we just close it. And this will give us the current week. So it always, of course, here is the same because now it's the same week for all of them. But now we can compare that to this week. So we can go in again and now do two equal signs. And then we can take another format date. And this time we can take the actual date that we filled in and again big W and then close it off. And now as you can see we get this checkbox and for uh, the ones that are in this week it's checked and for the one that's not in this week it's not checked. So that's the first part. So now we have a formula to see whether the entry is in the current week but we of course also need to know whether we actually did the habit on that day. And we need to combine them into one property so that we can then roll it up here. And we're going to do this with a second formula. Now you could write the whole formula in one property, but it's easier to do it in two. And in particular, if you want to track several habits, then uh, you need to do this second part for each of them. And then again, it's a bit easier if you have this here on the side. So we're going to hit the plus button again, another formula. And this time we just ask sleep this week. And we're going to uh, end it. And we're going to ask whether this was checked and this was checked again. Super simple, simple formula. All we need is we need to type and. That's how we check whether two th things are true. And then we ask whether sleeping equals true. So two equal signs and then true without quotation marks. And then uh, whether this week equals true. So this week and again equals true. And then we close it. And now we see 
none of them are true. If I check something else for sleeping, it's also not true because we didn't sleep this week. But if we check today, it will be checked. Now, we need to get this information in here. So we're going back here and we're going to add another rollup. And this rollup will check for how often we slept this week. So let's call this uh, sleep this week. And we pick our relation. And this time we're going to check sleep this week. And again, we will show uh, count the checked properties. And this will update now every week because next week <laughs> now, of course, it doesn't match this week anymore. So at the beginning of every week, this resets. And on a Monday morning, you see, okay, I've slept so far zero out of seven days uh, correctly. And uh, then you can go through your week and will always update. That's the first part. And the second part that I wanted to show you, right, is how you can get this display. Now, this overall display is something we'll cover at the end of the video, but I'm already going to show you the formula to get this. And it's actually super simple. We're going to add another property. And now you also see why I add these hashtags, because we will have quite a few properties, in particular if you do this for several habits. And again, a very simple formula. And this one will be display sleep this week. And then we're going to use something called concat. And with concat, we can combine several elements. And what we will combine is the number of sleep uh, this week, our sleep target, and a bit of text. Now, in order to combine text and a number, we need to first format the number. So we type format, and then we pick our um, sleep this week number. And then we're going to type a plus si uh, sign, and then in quotation marks our text. So we do a space, so that there's a space after number, and then out of, another space, close it, plus again, and then format again, and then our target for sleeping. And then we're going to uh, close all of this uh, off, done. And now we see one out of, and then there's nothing because we don't have a sleep target actually. So let's say we want to sleep enough on five out of seven days. And now you see one out of five. Now you can now add another emoji in there as well. Then you would go in here before the format, right? And type in quotation marks, your emoji. So let's take the rocket, uh, put a space afterwards so that you have a bit of breathing room and then the plus icon. And now you have this display and we figure out later how to display it nicely on the side box. But we have pretty much all the functionality here now to display, calculate and display how often out of our target number we did our habit this week. Now, besides our weekly performance, we also want to know our overall performance, right? So if we keep tracking our habits for three months, how often can we actually reach our goal for a specific habit? The formula for this one is a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to give it to you and then uh, explain what it does. You can also like just copy it from the blog post linked in the description, uh, or you can quickly pause it here to write it down. Now, uh, we're going to add this formula here, and we're going to call this the uh, percent uh, overall sleep. And then the formula is this. Now, what this does is it will take the times that we slept, and divide it by our, uh, our target for the sleeping. And then it will adjust that based on the actual time that has passed, right? So it will make sure that uh, it always takes into account the exact amount of days that have passed and adjust the target correctly for that. And uh, then it will round it in the end so that we have a nice short number and not one of these ultra long percentages. And let's click on done. And then we can uh, start formatting the number uh, as a percent. And we see our overall sleep score is uh, 40%. That's based off a target of five per week and us sleeping uh, two times uh, out of this. So uh, that makes sense, right? And we can, if we had now another one, we would be at 60%. So I check it off. Uh, and my overall performance is at 60%, even though there are only three days in here, right? So that's the nice thing about this formula. It will always correctly assess where you are in your complete journey. Now, of course, we also want to display that. So let's repeat the steps that we had here and go here, add another formula property. And this one will be display uh, sleep overall. And same drill, we use concat. And we can then start with sleep. Uh, colon, and then we will format our uh, number. So we take format, and then we take the overall sleep. Before we format it, we need to make sure that we uh, multiply it by 100, because this is like, uh, right, otherwise 0.6, right? So we do it, uh, multiply it by 100, and then 
we also uh, add a percent sign, right? So that we display that correctly and then close it and then we see sleep 60%. Step three, build your dashboard. Now you're already 80% done. All that's left is to build a nice front end. So as you can see, we have this two column layout here and then we have uh, our habits here. We have uh, our buttons here to tick something off and then this nice uh, analytics display. So let's recreate that from scratch. So we go here and the first thing I wanna do is I'll take these tables and I'll turn them into pages. Now that we're done with the back end, we don't need to see them here anymore so we can hide them. And then I'm going to turn on full width. Next, I'm going to type slash call to to get two columns. And then we are going to do some headers. So an H2 here for my week and then another H2 uh, over there for my performance. Oops, great. And now under week, I want to see my, uh, uh, my specifics uh, for this week. So I'm going to hit enter and create a linked view of a database. And we're going to pick the habits database and we can take this existing view, but we want to tiny it up a bit. So I'm going to properties and I will hide now the date again and I will hide the two formulas because we don't need to see that. We only need to see the day and whether we are sleeping or not. And then I want to set up a filter. Now we already have this one filter in there, right? That says that it has to be linked to my stats. So that's great. We're actually going to turn this into an advanced filter because I just prefer to set up here. And then we add a second thing. And the second thing will be that the date um, is actually within this week or like for that, sorry, not let's not take date. Let's take this week is checked. And that way, we now only see the entries for this week, which means again, you will, when you start on Monday, you will have a clean, fresh thing, just one entry there. The entries will fill up as you go through your week. And then on Sunday or like on Monday, they will reset and again, only show you what's relevant for this week. So let's also hide this to make it a bit cleaner. Nice. So that one already works. Let's quickly add in the statistics. So we go to the performance side, hit enter again, again, create linked view of database. And this time we take the stats. And here we want uh, a different view. We want a gallery view. That's the secret behind this trick. And you're gonna see what I mean in a moment. Let me move myself out of the way. Here we're going to first turn off the title and then card preview, we're going to turn off. The size can be medium, but let's actually turn it to large for the purpose and, and then click on done. And now we have this card here. Now we can show on this card all the stats that we calculate, right? So we click the three dots, go to properties, and then I want to see my display ones. And that's also the reason why I named them like this, because if you do this for a few habits, this will be a long list of properties and then you can simply search for display and get them easily. So we want to display sleep this week and we want to display sleep overall. Now that's nice, but as you can see here, we had a few more things. We had like your weekly performance and then we had like a separator, right? So in order to do that, we simply add in some space up properties, like I call them. So click in three dots on properties and then new property. And this, those will be all formulas, but they're super simple. Uh, so this one will be the um, display uh, weekly performance and in the formula, we just uh, write in quotation marks, uh, weekly performance, that's it. And then we duplicate the same thing and this one will be our uh, overall performance. Oops, overall performance, uh, quickly change weekly to overall. And then last but not least, our spacer. So display uh, and spacer. And this one will be just empty, right? So you just remove everything out of here. Just put like a single uh, space in there. Perfect. Now we just need to rearrange them. So we want to have the weekly performance at the top. Then we want to have the spacer in between. And then we have our overall performance. Perfect. So now we have weekly performance, two out of five, of course. Uh, we would should add like an emoji that fits better here or like write sleep here if we have several habits because the rocket probably not linked too much to sleeping. But other than that, already gets pretty close to what we wanna try to achieve. So we're just missing two more things, buttons and recurring templates. Now the recurring templates are important so that you get a new entry every day and don't need to do it manually. And that way your statistics will always uh, keep in sync, right? If you forget <laughs> to do your habits for three days, you will still get new entries here and they will still count the days. So this will 
tick down your score, but you will always know exactly where you're at. So one after the other. Let's first do the buttons. To them, let's go here and press spa uh, slash and then button for the new awesome button block. And in this button block, we can now define rules of what should happen when we click it. So first we get an emoji and we're going to click, uh, get the, the sleep one, right? So the, like maybe there's a moon, nice. And then we just call this sleep. And then we add like what's supposed to happen when this is clicked. Now, what I want to happen is that um, I want to edit pages, right? I want to make sure that the thing is checked for today's habit. So I click edit pages in, I will select my database, my habits, and then I need to set a filter to find which habits to edit. And it's actually super simple. I just want to make sure that the date is today. Perfect. So this means for today's habit, uh, the button will apply the changes. And the change that I want is edit the property. And I want to make sure that sleeping is checked. Great. And then can I click on I can, I can click on done. And now let's uncheck today to see whether it works. And I click on the sleep button and it's checked. Perfect. I can uncheck both of them and see that if I click it now, it will only check the one for today as soon as it loads, not the other one. There we have it. Nice. Great. So again, you can add several buttons for all the habits, but uh, this is already most that we need for this one. Now we need the recurring template and a recurring template can be created if we click on a drop down and then new template. And what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to first name this with a timestamp. So I will say add today and I'm going to pick date when duplicated. This means it will automatically fill the correct date here in the front. I can also add an icon, uh, one for a day. So maybe we take the, the sunrise, why not? And now we also want to make sure that the date is automatically filled. Now the problem here is that right now, <laughs> the way Notion works is I can't click in here and set, okay, set this to today. But I can use a cool workaround and that involves turning the date quickly for a moment into a text property. So just bear with me. So we're going to edit the property. We're going to say this is text. And then in here, I'm going to type add today and pick date when duplicated. And then I'm going to turn this back into a date property. Uh, and da, 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 da. and now nothing is in here. It looks empty, but trust me, if you set it up like this, it will every time when you apply this template, it will automatically fill out the date. So let's click out of it and let me actually prove to you that that's the case. So let's for a second show our uh, date again and let's uh, just uh, make the today one our default template and now I click on new and you see it already automatically filled out March 29th even though in the template it looks like the date is empty so that works so I can delete this and close this and the last thing to do is make this template recurring so I click on the three dots and say repeat every day so every day and then you can pick the time that you want uh, it to be created. And then that means every morning I wake up, I will have a fresh set of entries in here. I can also now add a sort to make sure that the newest one is actually um, at the top. And there you have it. You can tick off your uh, newly created habit things through the button and get the performance calculated. As you can see, buttons in Notion are super powerful and this template only scratches the surface. Make sure to check out my deep dive into Notion buttons next for 12 more awesome use cases. But before you do that, don't forget to hit subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video.